Hello there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Qualcomm are in the midst of holding its Snapdragon Tech Summit, something they hold every year. Lots of exciting announcements have come out of the summit so far this year, including some interesting stuff on generative AI, a new laptop processor, the Snapdragon X Elite, and a new smartphone processor, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. And it's about the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 that I want to talk about in this video. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 is here. This is what we know about it. So it's following on the same naming as the previous years, Gen 1, Gen 2, Gen 3. It's got the Cryo CPU. What's the CPU setup? This is the key question. Well, here it is. It's one Cortex X4. I've got videos about the X4 here on this channel. Five five Cortex A720s. We'll dive more into what that means in a minute because some of them are clocked at three gigahertz, some of them are clocked at 3.2 gigahertz, and then two Cortex A520s clocked at 2.3 gigahertz. So this is a one plus five plus two configuration, one plus five plus two. So a couple of interesting things about this. First of all, you've got that really heavy middle section there, five of them, which is really interesting, and also only two efficiency cores. So Qualcomm opting to say, well, actually, we reckon we can make the A720 sufficiently efficient that we don't need to have too many Cortex A520 cores. Now, this is indifferent to, for example, Apple's latest iPhone chip, which has still got two performance cores and four power efficiency cores. Here we've gone with that one plus five plus two setup. So there you go. So what does that mean? You've got 3.3 gigahertz for the Cortex X4. That's the maximum CPU there. You've got three of them are clocked. These middle cores are clocked at 3.2 gigahertz. And then you've got two of them clocked at three gigahertz. That just that 200 megahertz difference there is sufficient for the power consumption. They're saying, no, that's all we need. We can now make a power efficient chip for mobile, for smartphones. And then notice these here are clocked at 2.3 gigahertz. Traditionally, the uh, efficiency cores have been clocked kind of like at 1.7, 1.8 uh, gigahertz. Click clocking these now at 2.3 gigahertz. It's very, very interesting. So overall, 30% performance boost. This is compared to the Snapdragon Gen 2, 12 megabytes of L3 cache there. Built using TSMC's second generation four nanometer processors, the N4P process, for those of you that like those little technical details. We've also, of course, got the Adreno GPU. Now, Qualcomm over the last few years have not really given much details about the Adreno GPU. They don't even give it a number anymore. We just know it's the Adreno GPU. I've talked to Qualcomm about this. They acknowledge that it's not what we, what I want, what the consumers want, what the technical nerds around us want us want, but that's what they're doing at the moment. They don't tell us anything about the number of cores it's got, the number of shaders it's got, we don't know any of that. All we know is the Adreno uh, GPU. However, what do we know? 25% faster, that's compared to the previous generation, 25% more power efficiency, and one hertz variable rate uh, in the display uh, processor. What does that mean? That means you can have things like when you've got always on screens or when you've got lock screens, it can really lower the uh, refresh rate under one hertz, which means it doesn't use nowhere near as much battery, which is a uh, very flexible now display options. We also know it's got 1.5 times better ray tracing than the previous uh, generation. It supports OpenGLES 3.2 and Vulkan 1.3, and there's hardware accelerated decoding for H.265, VP9, and AV1. Now, as I said, that display processor uh, can go down as low as one hertz. It can also go up now to 240 frames per second is now possible, up from 144 hertz in the previous generation. And as I mentioned, the DPU now supports variable uh, refresh rates down to one hertz for lock screens or always on displays. You've also got support for the Unreal Engine 5 uh, Lumen, state-of-the-art uh, real-time global illumination and reflections. First time this is on Snapdragon. Look at that puddle there with that bit of reflection in it there, the light streaming in through here. So uh, what they've got now in Unreal Engine 5 can be taken advantage of in the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. Other things to mention, of course, 5G. You've got the X75 modem, which supports millimeter wave and sub-6. Standalone, non-standalone, lots of different uh, modes available here. Downlink up to 10 gigabits a second. Uplink up to 3.5 gigabits a second. And it supports, for those of you that follow this kind of thing, 3G, PP, release 17 and 18. That's the specification that defines 4G, 5G 
and so on. In terms of Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, you've got the Qualcomm FastNet 7800 system. That means it's got Wi-Fi 7. So it supports all of these uh, different uh, Wi-Fi standards, including BE, AX, AC, and way back to the A, B, G, and N, because it supports six gigahertz, five gigahertz, and 2.4 gigahertz. So basically it supports everything, even back to the old days of what used to be like, you know, 11B uh, or whatever. It can cover it all and Wi-Fi 7. And then of course, you've got good Bluetooth support, including Bluetooth LE audio. You've got the APTX codecs and so on. Uh, and so uh, lots of great stuff there for audio and for Bluetooth. A couple of other general things to mention. You've got Qualcomm Quick Charge 5 technology, LPDDR5X memory up to 4,800 megahertz, up to 24 gigabytes supported. Will we see a 24 gigabytes phone? That could be quite interesting. USB version 3.1. Take note, Apple. Take note, Apple. Look, this is how you meant to do it. Version 3.1 Gen 2 using Type-C support, UFS 4.0 support if necessary. Now, there's a whole load of stuff that Qualcomm also announced to do with generative AI features on the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. In fact, there's so many, I think it deserves its own video. So do watch out for that. It will be coming out soon. But you can run things like Llama, that's uh, the large language model locally. So you can run a generative AI kind of in the same way you chat GPT, but on your phone. You've got Qualcomm AI stack models. They give you a whole bunch of models that are available for developers to start using out of the box got great features like photo expansion, which we're only just getting used to seeing in things like, you know, Photoshop on the desktop. Now you can do that on your phone and it does it on the phone locally. You've got stable diffusion again that can run on the phone. And I'll do this in a whole separate video, but really interesting stuff coming now for the AI part of the setup. Okay, so there you have it, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. Now, normally Qualcomm announced this chip towards the end of the year, and then we start to see it really coming into phones at the beginning of next year, February, March, April of next year from all of the big brands so i'd love to hear what do you think about the snapdragon 8 gen 3 will you be upgrading to a new phone with this processor as soon as we get any kind of benchmarking information i will surely make a video sometimes qualcomm announce a thing called the qualcomm reference device the qrd which although not a phone from samsung or oneplus who or whoever it's a device that qualcomm make and that does give us a good idea of the performance we can expect if they've done that again this year and people are getting some benchmarking information, I will certainly make a video. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.